first of all, like to thank the Institute for People's Enlightenment for inviting me to give this appreciation of the life and contributions of Malcolm X and Louise Langdon Little. But before we begin, I just wanted to just spend a couple of seconds to add to the um, to the tribute that was paid before uh, to the Malcolm X's family for you know their um, their tragedies, and to add to that, unfortunately, um, the latest tragedy of the Malcolm X um, Louise Langdon little family, and that's the um, the case of Malika Shabazz, pictured here to the left who transitioned to the ancestors on November 23rd, 2021. So a couple of moments of silence. Widely considered one of the most influential figures of the 20th century, Malcolm X's autobiography has been the top 10 New York Times bestseller for many years and continues to sell about 150,000 copies every year. Malcolm's true telling has influenced many who made an impact on the US and globally. We can mention the likes of playwright August Wilson, poet Audrey Lord, who by the way has Grenadian roots, the Black Panther Party, founders uh, Huey Newton, Bobby Seals, who have all credited Malcolm X as the spark that lit their light. First, Black President Barack Obama, former Attorney General Eric Holder, have similarly credited Malcolm, Malcolm's journey as their inspiration. Malcolm's message has had a major influence on the rise of hip hop. Has had a major influence on the rise of hip hop as an art form and has been adopted by youth groups fighting for their own identity struggles in many nations. Rap artist Chuck D, Ice Cube, Kendrick Lamar, as well as reggae artists such as Mutu Baruka, Dennis Brown, and others, have also credited Malcolm X as their inspiration. Malcolm's image has been utilized around the world as iconic as Bob Marley, Che Guevara, etc. Many across the world utilize Malcolm's image and protests. In 1984, Iran, the Islamic Republic of Iran, issued a postage stamp with Malcolm X's image in honor of the world struggle against racial discrimination. The United States honored Malcolm X with a stamp in 1999 as part of the Post Office Black Heritage Series. Omaha, Nebraska has had a Malcolm X Day off and on since 1976. The house that Malcolm Little family grew up in is now being considered uh, to be made a landmark or at least the area. But the, the release of Spike Lee's Malcolm X in 1992 reincarnated Malcolm X to a younger generation, this time in color. But the essence of Malcolm X's contribution to civil rights political rights, human rights, anti-racist and pan-Africanist causes are well known. What is not sufficiently highlighted in the many narratives about Malcolm X is the role of his parents, particularly his very educated and socially committed activist Grenadian mother who nurtured him and imbued in him a lifelong political and ethical skill set, the basis of a political education that will inform Malcolm's future generation. The lack 
of awareness of the contribution of an immigrant woman who has given so much is testimony to the resilience of patriarchy and male supremacy within the wider society and the civil rights movement in particular. Les Payne argues in The Dead Are Arising that even in Malcolm X's Alex Haley's autobiography, the early influence of an interaction with his parents, including his mother, is overlooked for the sake of crediting the whole of his development to the spiritual leader he will later encounter. But at a more, at a more basic level, at a more general level, the obscuring of Luisa's role reflects a historiographical bias in the perception of women as lesser contributors of struggle and as, promoted, as, as promotion of a subservient role. And I am so happy that we have people among us today in this forum that are working to redress this imbalance. Dr. Merle Collins, Aki Peterson, Keisha Blaine, Professor McDuffie, and the likes of Jessica Russell, et cetera, are undertaking the mission to excavate Louis Little from historical obscurity. What, am I, what I am doing here with this short presentation is tapping on their shoulders. It is ironic as it is unnatural that we have this, that we have to uncover women's agency when our own history is replete with the contributions of Higuerite women. Among others, we can reference the agency of Queen Ya Ashantewa of the same West African area that Louise Langdon's grandparents came from, Jupiter and Mary Langdon, Mary R. Jane. They came from that same area of West Africa where her grandparents were most likely kidnapped. Queen Ya Asantawa declared war on the colonists and said that since the men of the clan were afraid to fight, she'll take on the fight. But there's a long list of other such brave women in African resistance throughout the diaspora. Nani of the Maroons, King Nzinga, Queen, sorry, Queen Nzinga, uh, Kali House of the, you know, one of the early reparations activists in the United States and the diaspora, just to name a few. It is ironic that some of these very issues of combating patriarchy are some of the very issues that Louise was combating as a radical activist who challenged patriarchy and racism. This deficit has robbed us a lot and we need to redress this. The Malcolm X and Louise Langdon legacy provide useful lens through which we can examine a variety of themes, not the least of them, positive example of the immigrant experience, valuable lessons for personal transformation and the basis of an exploration of a reimagined uh, transnational Grenadian citizenry. I agree with Selwyn Kojo when he says that like an individual, a society can only know itself and its future when it explores its antecedents, those who came before. We can have little notion of where we are going if we do not consciously appropriate our past and make it a part of our very living present and our future. And, and Malcolm, uh, Malcolm X has said uh, very similarly, and also um, Marcus Garvey. But at the most basic level, it is important to recognize that without Louise Langdon, there will be no Malcolm X. And to say this is not to make a biological case, it is a social, educational, and ideological one. Louis, Louise Norton Langdon's teachings and values were consciously imparted to Malcolm and all the children of black pride, racial consciousness, social commitment, and it, it has molded Malcolm to become who he was. We learn from Dr. Collins that even the naming of her children, Wilfred, Reginald, and his brother, and, and, his, and the other brothers, including Malcolm, had a certain amount of agency. Louise Little 
was consciously connecting them to their Grenadian roots through the names of their, of their relatives back home. In a time of heightened xenophobia and anti-immigrant fervor on both sides of the Atlantic, destinations where the masses of many Grenadian and Caribbean people settle, it is important to share Louise's story as someone who came to North America and gave more to the US and the world than she could ever have taken. Louisa, properly known as, popularly known as Louise, was raised by her maternal grandmother, Mary Jane Langdon. Her grandparents, Jupiter and Mary Jane Langdon, were free Africans brought to Grenada after emancipation. But their existence in Grenada, their life in Grenada was very much, um, uh, you know, similar to those of the enslaved. It is well known that her mother, then a child, was violated by a privileged British administrator living in Grenada at the time. Dr. Collins has done an amazing job tracing the circumstances of Louise's birth. So I wouldn't go into uh, any greater detail. Born in 1896, Louise emigrated from Grenada in June 1917. The population of Grenada then was 63,000. The Grenada Louise left during the closing years of World War I was one of few opportunities in employment and education, resulted in massive immigration. Only a quarter of school-aged children, however, were enrolled in schools. And during that decade, immigration first affected the natural population increase on the island. Between 1911 and 1921, 12,000 people immigrated, the highest volume since slavery. While 70% of all immigrants were male, there were also growing demands for female, mostly as domestic workers. Canadian immigrants went to virtually every corner of the Americas and to the United Kingdom. A Pan-Africanist missionary, as I will call her, Louise's activism took her from Canada, from Montreal, Canada, to Philadelphia, and to the American Midwest, areas that could not have been more unfamiliar uh, to her, um, you know, in terms of where she came from in Ladie, Grenada. A 20-year-old Grenadian girl migrated to Canada to live with her Garveyite uncle, Ed Gutton, in Montreal. According to Dr. Collin, Louise helped establish the groundwork for development of the organization in Canada before continuing her Garveyite activism, developing the work of the Garvey movement in the um, in you know the UNIA in Philadelphia and the U.S. Midwest. Two years so two years after arising after arriving in Canada, young Louise will marry a fiery black preacher from Georgia on May 10th, 1919. A few years later, the couple welcomed a little boy who will eventually take the name Malcolm X, 1925-1965. A fellow Garveyite, Louis preferred that she was attracted to Earl because of his blackness. So this was a young woman who was fresh out of rural Grenada and, and was on the front line of the, um, the, the you know, the, the racial uh, equality battles. She was sent to, she was sent to, um, to Omaha, Nebraska by the UNIA because of her and her husband's uh, militants. Earl and Louise were dispatched to build UNIA chapters in Omaha, Nebraska after a violent race riot broke out in 1919. Thousands of white mobs burned down a, a, a county courthouse and lynched a black man, Willie Brown. They almost killed, they almost uh, lynched the, the mayor of that town as well. Blacks in Omaha were forced to arm and defend themselves. And Louise and her husband were sent there to aid the defense of the black communities there and to help build UNIA uh, chapters. 
But there, these were hardly uh, new to Louise and, and Earl. KKK threats already had been threatening uh, the, the, uh, the little family in, in Philadelphia before they moved to Omaha. So the Red Summer uh, basically was one of the many cities. Well, the, the Red Summer um, spread across the United States. The racist racial violence, major racial riots and lynchings was, were called the, the, collectively the Red Summer. And uh, the Omaha riot was uh, one of the, um, the sparks in, in, in these, um, in these uh, protests, in these, these rebellions, these white uh, racist riots. So this is the atmosphere that Louise uh, came to in the United States. It was not like coming to Brooklyn like many of us and uh, London, many of us had, you know, where we were basically in the comfort uh, of people that were struggling, that had struggled before and made it much more um, acceptable, living conditions. At least on two occasions, she showed her own militancy against white supremacy. Even when she was pregnant with Malcolm X, members of the Ku Klux Klan surrounded the family at night, brandishing shotguns and the rifle and, and rifle while her husband was away. She confronted them using psychology to, def to fend off, but was but but made no apology for her activism. Again, she stood ground. So Louise regularly encouraged her children to read black nationalist newspapers. She taught math, philosophy, and poetry to the kids while they were at home, planting a literary seed which ignited Malcolm's insatiable love for reading and his own espousal of Gaviite politics. According to journalist Les Spain, who did extensive research with Louise's family for his book, The Dead Are Arising, Louise came to the U.S. hell-bent on ensuring all rights due to her children were attained with sound education and a life of accomplishment. He quotes Malcolm's older brother, Wilfred, recalling that Louise was well-versed in language and grammar and was emphatic about how she taught her children. She did not accept or allow them to use the term Negro or colored. She instilled in them that they are black people. My mother, quoting, my mother was serious, never jovial. She will always get us to the facts about what we are talking about. She will sing Matt to us and teach us French songs. My mother was the one who brought knowledge to us. And that was Wilfred actually talking about his the experience growing up with mom. He was Mark, uh, Malcolm X's older brother. Malcolm X in his autobiography, reflecting on his mother's impact on his consciousness pointed out, I remember that she will tell me to get out of the house, let the sun shine on you so you can get some color. So as Sister Professor Merle Collins pointed out in her article on the study of, the, um, of, of Louise Little, this was a warning to Malcolm X and her children about not getting, in my, using my own words, not getting twisted about race, privilege, and colorism, shadism. So Louise, Louise uh, was really and truly a journalist. Uh, she signed off her, um, her bulletins by saying, Louise Little reporter. It's unfortunate that, as I said before, because of patriarchy, her, much of her stories are hidden, but I know that there are people in our midst that are actually beginning to uh, go into the archive and get some more of Louise's actual intellectual work. Malcolm X and Louise's trans transformative narratives are very valuable as social um, and, in, uh, and individual uh, models. The conservative thinker, Andrew Bernstein in Heroes, Legends and Champions, Why Heroism Matters, identifies some basic characteristics of heroes. They provide value 
that further human life. They give people immense value from recognizing and admiring their heroism, and they are distinguished by the profound spiritual value that they provide by their examples. We already know that Malcolm X fits here. But when, as Dr. Collins acknowledged on Louise's contribution, when we consider uh, the, the, the role that she played as mother, activist, educator, woman, and nurturer of her children's imagination, in some ways, she is actually three times a hero. Unfortunately, Louise was a victim of the system. And we know the story now that she was actually institutionalized at the Kalamazoo State Hospital. And this is how the hospital looked when she um, you know, was, was institutionalized in, in 1927. Um, and some people even question whether she actually had um, a, the, the mental breakdown that she was, um, you know, what was said to, to have had, because um, when she was finally released from prison, um, Malcolm X and the, the family said that she was almost back to normal um, after a few, a, few, a few months. So this, all of this was precipitated by the loss of her husband through racial violence, uh, the efforts of the, the system, the institutional racism to take uh, away her house from her, um, especially after the death of her, of her husband, and the constant harassment of the, um, of the state on uh, the family, you know, and, and, and the Ku Klux Klan, uh, absolutely. I think um, there's a, there's a quote from um, Dr. Merle Collins, which was very startling. She said, she, uh, in 10 years after leaving her home in Grenada, Louise Little had worked as an activist in both Canada and the United States and had eight children, born 1920, 1921, 1923, 1925, 1927, 1928, 1929, and 1938. Louise Langdon and Malcolm X present great models as community organizers, personal uh, examples of personal transformation and black pride. They are, and these issues that they champion are enduring issues even today. We still have some of these issues with us today uh, that Louise and later Malcolm were championing for change. For example, we see lack of self pride in many, you know, amongst our population throughout the diaspora. Skin bleaching seems to be coming back. Uh, growing inequality, um, you know, even worse in many cases than when they were struggling. Assault on women's rights throughout uh, the diaspora and Grenada. Louisa's life of activism and Malcolm's core messaging provides, provide tools to help us move from self-hate to self-acceptance, redirecting oppressed people's energy towards self-determination and community empowerment. A shift from the prevailing bottom-up organizing uh, as opposed to uh, top-down. For his part, Malcolm has helped reframe the oppression of Black Americans from a civil rights issue to a human rights issue. He even took the issue of Black oppression internationally. He was a master of coalition building. Louise left similar lessons and a life of service is an important contribution from both of these heroes. They consciously dedicated their lives to the upliftment of, uh, of Black people from oppression. These are examples for our people uh, to model. As, as the Grenadian diaspora um, continues to mature and having uh, Grenadians uh, in greater numbers, in many cases, people that will be considered, will consider themselves to be Grenadians. Uh, we have to really rethink, you know, what the diaspora means, you know, and I think, I think we have to, we have to actually 
begin to see our, our, our people, our nation as transnational. One of the ways in which we can, we can do this is to begin to recognize Louise Langdon and Malcolm X, uh, even posthumously, like for example, issuing uh, passports to Malcolm X, uh, you know, um, and um, uh, Louise Langdon uh, and the family, the Malcolm X um, uh, and Louise Langdon family as Grenadians, right? And I think this is symbolic, but also very meaningful. In 1965, just a few weeks before his assassination, Malcolm X visited Nigeria, his grandparents' homeland at the University of Ibadan and was renamed Omawali, which means in the Yoruba language, the child has returned home. Let us take Malcolm X back to Grenada. There are many ways we can do this. We can complete Malcolm's, uh, or continue Malcolm's legacy and Louis' legacy by, for, by doing a number of different things. Like for example, we can join the, the wider struggle uh, a campaign to, to exonerate Marcus Garvey for um, you know, this unlawful, um, un unjust uh, and flawed uh, conviction for male fraud. It was just a matter of $25 in any case. Louise, uh, Louise, Louise Little and her husband wrote letters to Calvin Coolidge asking for Garvey to be released from prison uh, uh, at the time. I think it will be a great continuation, great continuity if we were to actually join this fight and ask uh, um, or demand that uh, Joe ba Joseph Biden, US President Joseph Biden, exonerate uh, Garvey at this point. Obviously, we have to consciously fight against the erasure of Louis Langdon's role in the history, uh, in the history books and other narratives making the third Monday of February, Ladig, uh, you know, uh, Louise Langdon, uh, a Malcolm X day, memorializing and honoring Louise Langdon and uh, Louise Langdon Little and Malcolm X will be great tributes to uh, these heroes. Um, we, need to, we need to actually teach uh, uh, Louise Langdon's legacy and Malcolm X's legacy in the schools in Grenada. It's kind of ironic that Malcolm X's book was banned from Grenada shortly after the invasion, okay? And I think um, it, it really says a lot in terms of how much we lost during that time. We actually, we should begin to regain what was lost. And one of the ways we can do this is to create lesson plans around Louise Langdon Little and Malcolm X. Thank you very much.